Today, we will learn measurement of angles, different types of angles. We learned that two rays starting from the same point form an angle. Are all angles the same? Think a little. No, we see that the angle formed between the wall and the floor is different from the angle formed between the ladder and the wall or the angle formed between the ladder and the floor. In a clock, if we place one needle in a fixed position and rotate the other needle, we will get different angles. To understand the concept of angles, we classify them into various types. To classify angles, it is necessary to know how to measure the angles. So, let's learn measurement of angles. You must have seen this object in your geometry box. Can you tell what it is and what its use is? Think a little. Let me tell you. We call this a protractor. We use it to measure angles. Its edge is divided into 180 equal parts where each part is called a degree. To measure, 0 to 180 marks are marked on it from both the left and the right sides. Just as we measure length in meters and weight in kilograms, we measure angle in degrees and denote it by this sign. For example, the measurement of this angle is 90 degrees and is expressed as 90 degrees. Using the protractor, we can measure 0 degrees to 180 degrees. So, let's find out how to measure an angle. Look, here is ray QP and ray QR. They are starting from the same common starting point Q and create an angle PQR. Here, point Q is the vertex of angle PQR. Similarly, ray PQ and ray QR are the sides of the angle PQR. Let us find the measurement of this angle. To start with, we place the protractor in such a way that the midpoint of its straight side comes on top of vertex Q. We will adjust the protractor in such a way that the line shown on the straight line completely covers any one side of the angle. Here, we place it on the side PQ. Side PQ represents zero angle. Therefore, we read that scale shown on the protractor on which PQ is expressed as zero. Moving ahead, on this scale, we will see which markings the other side of the angle is pointing to. Like here, QR is pointing to the mark 45 representing 45 degrees. With this, we can say that measure of angle PQR is 45 degrees. Now we have learned to take measurement of angle, we will understand different types of angles. Here, a clock is shown where one hand is on 12 and the other hand is on 3. If we measure the angle between both the hands, we will get 90 degrees. If the measurement of an angle is 90 degrees, then it is called a right angle. If you are aware of the directions, then it must be easy for you to understand that the angle made between east and north direction is 90 degrees, which means it's a right angle. Similarly, angle between north and west, west and south, south and east, etc. all makes 90 degrees or right angle with each other. Find out the measurement of all angles of a rectangle. Are all angles of a rectangle right angles? Try to find this by yourself. Now consider we move the clock hands from 12 and bring it to 1. So now, one hand is on 3 and the other is on 1. Think whether the angle formed between both hands will be a right angle? Absolutely correct. This angle is smaller than a right angle. If the measurement of an angle is smaller than 90 degrees, such an angle is called an acute angle. For example, this piece of cake is forming an acute angle. Similarly, you can see acute angles in the displayed situations. Now try to find out by yourself that which angle is made 
if you look at the tallest part of a tree or the roof of a building. Now look here. Here, both hands of the clock are in opposite directions. We can say that both hands of the clock are in one line. In such a situation, if we take the measurement of the angle formed by both hands, we get 180 degrees. Such an angle is called a straight angle. Can we establish a connection between straight angle and right angle? Try. You're absolutely correct. One straight angle is double that of a right angle. We see a straight angle in many situations. Some situations are like this. Take a look at this clock here. Here, the hands of the clock are making an angle greater than a right angle but smaller than a straight angle. Such angles are called obtuse angles. Some examples of obtuse angles are as follows. Pause the video and give it a thought. Now consider that both the hands of the clock are in the same position. Out of these, if we keep one hand in the same position and move the other to complete one circle, then we complete a circle and it is called a revolution. The angle of revolution is called a complete angle. We can see that to complete one circle, the hand moves from 12 to 6, which means it makes an angle of 180 degrees. In the same way, moving from 6 to 12 means again making another 180 degrees. Therefore, we can say that during one complete revolution, angle is made 180 degrees plus 180 degrees, which is equal to 360 degrees. Therefore, we can say that the measurement of one complete angle is 360 degrees. Therefore, we also say that a circle represents a 360 degrees angle. If a circle represents 360 degree angle, then identify the angle represented by a half circle or half of half circle. Try and find it. Now if we look here, the angle shown here is greater than a straight angle but smaller than a complete angle. We call such an angle as a reflex angle. Some of the situations of a reflex angle are as follows. So now, you must have understood different types of angles properly. With this, we will now understand another concept related to angles. Consider that two lines are intersecting each other at 90 degree angle. Such lines are called perpendicular lines. We write it like this, AB perpendicular to PQ and read it as line AB is perpendicular to line PQ. Some more examples of this are as follows. Consider the line segment AB is perpendicular to line segment PQ and along with this it is dividing line segment into two equal parts. In such situations, we say that line segment AB is perpendicular bisector of the line segment PQ.